we are talking today about solving the global food crisis. Like there's so many people around the world that are looking for their next meal. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Mm. And with all of the technology we have and all of the resources the human race has, it's it, it's a bit embarrassing that we're still yeah. in this situation. So, oh, where do we start? So, so I mean, apples in particular are an interesting one because an apple season is around three months a year. So you're growing your apples, but as a as a consumer, we expect oh. apples on our shelves year round. So there's a there's a nine month gap in the year where we're not actually growing our apples. So the right. the immediate you know solution is to just store apples for a year and then hey presto you've got it but apples are a living organism um once yes. they're picked from the tree they continue to respirate so you can imagine they're breathing in the carbon dioxide releasing oxygen um and then and then you've got like a degradation so what they do is they'll put them in these large cold store facilities that reduce the oxygen levels right down to around one percent um one, one to four percent temperatures down to two to four degrees and they pump the humidity up to around 90 95 percent humidity and that's just a perfect condition and preservation I, preservation I, I kind of joke around it's like a cryogenic sort of state um what would happen mm. if you chucked a human in there obviously not much good <laughs> yeah. but um but yeah so and that's how we've been able to get our apples to sit in cold storage for up to 24 months right so they so basically Ooh. what it's doing is it's Taking the cellular degradation process and yeah. slowing it right down. Yeah, it's just basically like stopping the respiration. Um, wow. That that you know the natural thing that the apples do. Um, all, all um, you know, all plant life for that matter. Um, so so oh, then so then right. essentially um, you've then got uh, a product that's able to meet consumer demand. So year round, pretty Granny Smiths, pink ladies sitting on the shelf yeah. at Woolies. Um, and what will happen is in that process, obviously they want to keep the door shut because then they have to um you know, re- get it down to that atmosphere again. Um, they'll open the doors and X amount will be lost and that just goes straight to landfill. I um, see, I see. And so then that's why. the yeah. rest. And so th- this is the problem just in that sort of segment, like in terms of whether it looks nice or not, um, whether it gets to the end consumer's fridge and they only eat, you know, mm-hmm. four of the apples that they bought. And at and the core, the core to all that whole entire problem, sorry, that's a bit of a pun, apple core, um, <laughs> ah, is... Man is um consumer demand we want the apples all year round so we just they just need to they need to store like store so much more than than is required just because they're trying to overcome the loss yeah. you know um transportation is a massive thing like how do you get a bunch of fresh produce in a steel container across the ocean kiwi mm. fruits getting sent to you know to asia to all mm. around the world from new zealand um berries out of south america there's it's like the infrastructure of getting you know a living organism that's just been picked from its natural environment on in a boat for two months across the you know it's just it's just like a it's a large infrastructure problem so that's why they have an oversupply and then they just absorb the losses so isn't there any any better way to to do this yeah well i mean it's essentially why we why we exist so I mean, we're a startup company we've been around for in australia for two years uh we've done a lot of r d in this space and as what we've developed is a product it's essentially a sensing product um there's there's there an array of there's an array of organic compounds which you could imagine you'd find in a in a cool store environment. Uh, one in particular, our, our sort of favorite little one is uh, ethylene, so it's C two H four. It uh is essentially a naturally occurring organic compound. Um, okay. All like most life emits it, but in terms of uh, fresh produce, um, it's a really good indicator to the maturation cycle of fresh produce. So you can imagine like mm-hmm. apple, so bananas are the best example. They're, they're little, they're green, then one day they're yellow and then you can eat it. If you were to map that on a on an ethylene, an ethylene emission sort of chart, you'd see this nice curve that goes all the way up. And there's a point where it's like perfect and then it kind of drops out. And that, uh-huh. that emission of ethylene is what scientists and these, these cool store, or, you know, growers in general have been using to track when things are ripe. Um, mm-hmm. the the really hard part isn't exactly when it's ripe because it's emitting a lot. It's you know that couple of months out where it's emitting like really really tiny amounts, like right down in the parts per billion range. Um, Whoa! So we uh, we've developed a sensor which is able to, in real time, track that emission um, months out from ripeness, and that's where there currently doesn't exist uh, a really sophisticated uh, solution, and where 
we're basically on the, the verge of cracking that. So we're in our final stage trials, um, research trials, and then uh, in the next couple of months, we'll be on a clients um, with a with a prototype device as they're able to sort of, you know, trial within their ecosystem. And then, yeah, yeah hopefully. Wow. So, so let's say I'm a client. How would I actually use that? Will I just take a small sample and test it? Or how, how would I go about doing it? Yeah, so rewinding a tiny bit how they're currently doing it uh bananas have a five part test uh they oh, don't okay. use they don't use a device at the moment so it's probably easy to see what they're currently doing and then how mm. we would mm -hmm. um attempt to solve it so yeah. they're currently um they're grabbing a banana they're doing like a skin tension test like seeing how firm it is they're snapping it in half they're smelling it ripping some of the peel off so they're doing very physical labor intensive um so basic stuff really yeah. basic stuff <laughs> right. um who or what's another great example so uh, they've got these these special kind of like little probe devices that presses against the skin um, and once again tests to see, you know, based on oh. a certain level of skin tension is what ripeness level it is. The problem is we call these destructive tests. So essentially yeah. the produce you're um, testing on gets destroyed. Yes. The really interesting thing about yeah. ethylene, it's a sneaky little bugger. What it does is um, it amplifies in damaged fruit. So you can imagine... Um, a really good example oh. is if you have an unripe banana and you put it next to a very ripe banana overnight, the one that isn't ripe will become ripe. That's oh. where if you've got like a rotten batch of um, produce, so it's a rotten, I say it's overripe and so it's past hmm. the point of being being edible, that will have a compounding effect on all the batches around it. Wow, I had no idea that was... Well, okay, here's another <laughs> wow. here's another fun, fun one for you. Bananas are picked green. So every banana you yes. eat has been mm -hmm. picked green. They put them in these rooms and they release a big gas bottle full of ethylene into the room, um, maybe like a couple of weeks out from being on your shelves at your, you know, your supermarkets. Um, and then all those bananas will go from green to yellow and then you pick it and you... How long will it take to go from green to yellow just out of interest? Oh, like 24 to 48 hours, depending on how much is, oh. is it's exposed to. So yeah, it's, yeah, so a lot of people don't know that. It's dramatic. Um, so that's an, a natural occurrence, that ethylene is... is yeah. Produced by say bananas, but they're just using H2H4. that gas exactly. Yeah. To yeah, exactly, and and that's um that's that's the industry. So and the the thing the thing that there's a lot of um people in the market at the moment, a lot of sensing products, uh, extremely expensive, very sophisticated tech that you would need a like a a specialist, if not a scientist, to operate. Uh, mm -hmm. like talking like a so it's called um the, the main ones are called GC machines, so gas chromatography. Uh, okay. They will uh, have like a local lab. So um, New Zealand's a perfect example. There's a lot of kiwi fruit, obviously, coming out of New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, what they do is they'll go into the room and they'll take an air sample with like a syringe, um, put a cap on, pop it in an envelope, send it to the local lab. Then they'll get a test result back in, you know, two days to, a, to, to two weeks. And cool. then that'll say the ethylene concentration in that room is X amount. Um, the problem with that is... Two days. That's, well, yeah. from from our research... Uh, like excess levels of ethylene in a room has um, causes product failure or product damage within two hours. So um, so yeah, and then within Whoa. eight, it's kind of like they're forty six hours too late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and useless. then that that has a whole other sort of array of problems. Um, and so so that's where the product that we're developing um, it takes a lot of the the ideas behind how how we how it's sensed and the accuracy levels, but it becomes a real-time device. So we actually put our units inside the room yeah. um, and then we're constantly sensing. So we're basically constantly yeah. getting room. like Re Real-time data. So getting back to the the apples, mm. so how how much, what, what would you expect to be able to reasonably um, preserve instead of 45% uh, loss? What's your estimate to we, lowering that? Yeah, so it's it's sort of a twofold thing. So one one of the ideas is is firstly what can we save? So like um we've done trials in the past that um have given us good indications that we can reduce the wastage under five percent. Um, wow! But then it becomes like a supply and demand issue. Like, do we need to store that many apples? Uh, because if oh, we know we're gonna, yeah. but but on top of that, they talk about by twenty fifty. We're gonna to have to double our food supply to meet mm. to meet the needs of a growing population. Yes, and you know we've got all these people saying like, 
what's going to happen to the world. It's going to blow up. And they don't say that, but you know what I yeah. mean? Like mm, there's yeah. a massive, this yeah. is like a critical sort of mass point in time. Um, well, straight away, you're like, well, if we've got to double our food supply and we're wasting 45% of it, let's just fix that. And you're not changing anything else. You're not, you're not changing trucking routes. You're not mm. changing farming practices. You're just mm. changing the, the way that they're stored. Mm. And to go from potentially 45% loss down to only, you know, 5% or whatever it is, that's, that's huge. That's massive. Yeah. yeah. And you can imagine the data that you get from a couple of seasons of having this sort of device in there. You're starting to educate yourself on like, hey, this is the best possible environment for for long-term storage of fresh produce. Now, I'm sorry to do a shameless plug, but we've got courses <laughs> literally in there. Let's take a look. Let's that's, take a look. <laughs> that's right. See, like, consu- if I could click on consumer oh, tips, um, that's a that's a fun little one, which basically, so, so it's just sort of pushed you through. But if you, like, you know, course overview there, it's going to give you a bit of a, you know, top and tail what it's about. And in there, there's a video mm-hmm. lesson. There's a cut. And it's, I mean, it's it's not going to be for everyone, but I feel like if you just jump in and have a little little fiddle around, you're going to learn a couple of fun things on how to make your produce last a bit longer. And this is just like a little thing we've just put together. And once again, it's like a little sort of side hobby um, passion project for us because you've got this information that you've learned from doing the research. How do you get it into the hands of people that can use it? Well, on that note, thank you very much, Josh. I, I hope that you know everything pans out, especially for this cold storage mm. monitoring system because it so. sounds like such a step in the right direction revolution yeah really. revolution that will as long as we save waste i mean that's got to be a good thing yeah totally yeah definitely yeah. all right awesome Thanks, guys